Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt Modi with Dodge Jam. What we're gonna do in this video, we're just gonna bet some baseball. Uh, so I'm betting some early lines for tomorrow, July 9th. Uh, very exciting stuff. Again, my name is Matt Modi. I'm a content producer and betting analyst for Odds Jam. My job is essentially to make uh, people like you that are watching this video more knowledgeable, more profitable sports bettors. It's a great job, I love my job. So if you do wanna meet with me and ask me any questions, my, uh, my calendar, there's a link to my calendar in the description of the video. All you have to do is just click that link, sign up for a time, and then we can chat. So definitely sign up um, if you want to, like I said, if you have any questions. Uh, for me, you can find me on Twitter as well, at Modi underscore Matt, uh, flashed on the screen here. Just really boring last name, comma, first name. But let's get into it. So I got two bets total for tomorrow that I really, really like. Uh, what we're looking at here, of course, is the Odds Jam positive expected value page. Um, anywhere in which you see a play on the positive EV page, it's going to be a situation in which you are getting an edge on the sports book that you're betting it at. The way it works is this Odds Jam line here is pulled from the most accurate bookmaker in the world in terms of pricing odds. Uh, this bookmaker accepts the most sharp action, the most money across the most countries. So they generally have the most efficient betting market and their lines are tr what the lines should truly be priced at. So anywhere in which you're getting more favorable odds on another book is going to have positive expected value associated with it. So for this one right here, it's a yes run first inning in the Reds versus Rays game. So the odds jam line prices this at minus 127. One thing that's it that is important to do is just remove the VIG. Uh, the VIG is essentially just the juice that sportsbooks price up odds. It's how they make their money. So uh, the no VIG odds is what the tr line is truly being priced at with no VIG, no juice. So you can get an accurate representation of what the odds jam line views a line to be priced at. And so this one priced at minus 116. So the odds that we are betting it at are on FanDuel at minus 106. Um, so that bet has a positive expected value of about 4.52%. So this number here, excuse me, this number here is incredibly important. This number here can be viewed as your profit margin. Um, obviously, if the bet wins, you get all of the winnings, and if it loses, you lose your risk. But over time, you will notice that the uh, positive EV percent that you are placing your bets on will start that percentage will start to equal what your ROI is over time. Um, obviously, there's a couple factors and not every single bet on here is something that should be bet. We look at things like market width, we look at discrepancies and stuff, but this number is really, really important to, um, to understand. So basically, for every $100 bet on this specific play, you'll make about $4.52. So if you extrapolate that out over the course of time, you can start to understand how profitable you are. Let's say you place 10 bets a day at 5%, um, 100 bucks at 5% EV, then you're making five bucks on every bet multiplied by 10 bets, so that's 50 bucks. So 50 bucks in a day doesn't seem like a ton of profit, but multiply that by seven days in a week, multiply 50 bucks by 30 days in a month, and you start to see just how much money you can make from placing these positive expected value bets. So again, this 4.52 is very, very important. Um, but there's a couple things that I like to look for before I determine whether a bet is worthy of placing or not. Number one is what I referenced earlier, market width. Market width is essentially a way in which we can measure confidence in what the Ajdam line is being priced at. Essentially, the way it works is the closer these two numbers are together, the tighter the market is going to be, which equals more confidence. And the market width is literally just calculating that difference. So anything that is 25 and below is going to be uh, within range in terms of market width. The next thing I like to do before determining whether I want to place a bet or not is I like to look into all the markets. So if you just right click this button, click into a new tab, it pulls up where every sports book is pricing these odds at. So we know that FanDuel prices it at minus 106. We know that the odds jam line prices it at minus 127. What we see here is that every other book prices this, this market, this bet closer to the odds jam line. The odds jam line has this bet as the most favorable outcome at minus 127 odds compared to all the other books. And every other book has it in the minus 120s. So no book even has it in the teens or the high minus 108, minus 109, something like that. So this minus 106 is a true outlier when you compare it across all of the sports books. Another thing I like to look at is if you click this calculator here, it gives you a win percentage. This is based on the no big odds of the Odds Jam Perfect line. I think it's important to understand what the win percentage of your bets are. For this one, it's close to 54%. So everything checks out from a math perspective. Now there's a couple things 
I like to do from a handicapping perspective before I actually place a bet. Now, I don't do a ton of hand handicapping in these videos. I mostly keep it high level. But in this case, it uh, looks like the Rays are going against a really bad pitcher in the Reds and Hunter Green. He's young, he throws gas, but he really hasn't been able to put it together despite getting a decent amount of strikeouts. Uh, so the Rays batters haven't gone against him yet, but I have a lot of faith in this one. So I really like taking advantage of these poor pitching matchups like we see on the screen here. So I ended up locking this one in. I put the full uh, almost five unit on it. Has me put about 119 on it. I rounded down. I put 110 on it, as you can see on FanDuel. I've already locked this one in. I have a weird location issue specifically on FanDuel, so that's why I had to place it on my phone before I recorded. But I did lock it in, as you can see, 110. Rays, uh, Reds, yes run first inning, minus 106, uh, placed today. So that is my first bet for this game. Now the next one that I'm looking at here is the under in the White Sox versus Detroit Tigers. So this play is plus 172 on FanDuel. The odd jam line has it at plus 152, and with the VIG removed, priced at plus 161. So that's the math behind it. That gap between the plus 161 and the plus 172 is what has positive EV. This one has a market width of exactly 25 cents, so this one is well within range there. And the profit margin here is at 4.2%. So not quite as high as the one that I was just placing, but still pretty high. Uh, above 4%, above 3% is that, sweet, is that sweet spot in terms of range that we're looking at. Uh, so this one checks all the, bo all the boxes. And again, this 4.2% is really, really important. You place $100 on this bet, you'll, pro you'll profit roughly $4.20. Again, not breaking the bank, but you need to understand that these plays, this profit compounds upon each other, and <clears throat> excuse me, and you'll just be profitable in the long run placing these bets. So again, looking into the markets, so under three and a half. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything to compare to because of the early nature of which the bets that I'm placing. But it still is positive EV, so I ended up locking this one in. The uh, win percentage isn't quite as high. It's like 38%, so I didn't put as much on it. This was roughly a $60 bet that I placed, as you can see here placed it on FanDuel, 60 bucks. Now, for handicapping purposes on this one, so I'm taking an under first half spread. Two decent pitchers, granted Garrett Hill is, is young and hasn't pitched a ton, so tough to get too much of a say on whether he's good or not. Johnny Cueto has been in the league, it feels like forever, but he's still a good pitcher. And I looked up the team hitting stats. They're both uh, towards the lower end of the league in terms of hitting. The White Sox are, have the 20th, just in terms of runs scored. Now, this isn't the most perfect metric in the world, but Scoring runs is kind of what we're fading in this case. So I took, I just looked at their offenses. The, the White Sox are 20th in the league. The Tigers are literally last in the league in terms of runs scored. So it uh, makes sense from the little bit of handicapping purposes that I did there. Uh, but regardless, I put $60 on this one. So I would recommend putting like a little over two units on this one. So the last thing that I need to do are just add these bets to my bet tracker. So you saw this little icon here, add to bet tracker. You can click that. Or you can click this plus button right here and add to bet tracker that way. But that's what I need to do. So I put 110 on this one. Uh, that was the yes run first inning. The next one was right here. I put 60 on. So now add to bet tracker and we're good to go. So the Oxygen bet tracker is incredibly helpful and an important tool in terms of making money. It's really important to track your bets and understand whether you're profitable or not. And the Oxygen bet tracker does that exactly for you. It gives you all the insights that you need to understand whether you're a profitable sports better or not, and what you can do differently, <clears throat> excuse me. But regardless, that is all I got for this video. So if you're tailing, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter at Modi underscore Matt. Let me know you're tailing. Comment on the video. Let me know you're tailing. Other than that, would appreciate if you could like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, and that's it. So I appreciate you guys watching and have a good one.